All right, YouTube, today is the day. We're about to do first impressions on the Almighty Metanium DC. I think my unboxing video has probably already been released. I will link it in the description. Let's go ahead and get outside where it's windy and throw this crankbait to start on the Metanium and see if we can't catch some fish. And I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and first impressions on it because if you watch the channel, you know I have a couple other DC reels. I love them to death and I think this one's gonna be just the same, probably on the next level. So let's go ahead and get out there, strap up the GoPro, and get rocking and rolling. All right, man, let it begin. I know it's a metanium video, but we're taking a couple different setups just for fun. We might throw a couple of the others just to compare. We got the Corrado, the Scorpion, and the brand new metanium. It's windy today. I'm thinking the crankbait's gonna do well. Also got a big old shad chatterbait that I might try and throw with a nice size swim bait trailer. They're doing a lot of construction over here. It's gonna be a background noise filled episode, but I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. Generally speaking, when we come here, we get lucky with a two or three pounder. Uh, and you know, we park across the street because we've also been kicked out here a time or two. So there's also that chance. This is gonna be my first bait caster or first rod and reel I've ever used fluorocarbon with. Uh, I've been fish vlogging for a year, so don't ask me how that happens. I'm like figuring out which one's the Corrado and which one's the Metanium. But uh, yeah, I've never fished this crankbait. It's like my go-to favorite with fluorocarbon, which I know sinks on my braid, which is what I normally throw it with. And so I'm curious if it's gonna dive a little bit deeper, which should be good for today. And then also, I just wanted to throw out there that I'm a little bit nervous about the first cast because I spooled it up last night and I know it's a little loose on here, but I have the brakes on auto and uh, I think we should be good to go. Let me just tighten up the, yeah, I need to tighten up the tension knob a little bit. Tighten that up to where it, to where your bait drops slowly. He's still dropping pretty quick. When you get those new reels, kind of dial them in. There we go, it's dropping nice and slow. And then the brakes are on auto. So first cast with the Metanium, let's see what happens. Wow. Dude, it reacts pretty good. That's with flu uh, fluorocarbon. Never thrown fluorocarbon on a DC reel before. First cast makes me pretty happy. I would say it's diving a little deeper. It definitely feels like it is. And the line is not floating on the top like it would if it was a uh, braided setup or even monofilament. So this, this crankbait might even dive too deep now that I'm using this line. Holy smokes, that's new. Catching all kinds of junk. I didn't hear the, the whine as much on that cast and I think it's just because it's real windy and there's a lot of construction going. Um, let's see what happens when I raise the rod tip up a little bit on this cast. It definitely doesn't act like braid. There's more stretch in it and you can tell it almost looks like it wants to backlash, but it doesn't. So I think the system's working pretty good for us. I'm gonna raise the rod tip up a little bit so it doesn't sink as low, and I'm slowing the retrieve down. That way he doesn't dive quite as low. But dude, a, a huge difference fishing this crankbait that I fish all the time uh, with fluorocarbon compared to braid. It definitely does dive down lower. That's really cool. And Christian should be, oh, there he is. Not much, man. Breaking out the new reel. Let's try this side of the fountain. Oh, there we go, I heard the whine a little bit that time. I just wanna know where the big boy is at. I'm stuck on something. Oh, I think I got one, but it's a really small guy. Dude, I like didn't even feel him. I think I got him on the side. First one on the Metanium DC. Woo! There, I was hoping the first one would be a little bit bigger, but you know, that's okay. Bite in the first 10 minutes. Actually, in the first probably five to 10 casts. Alrighty, babies. He was out, out far. Man, it's funny, for the last year and a half, the crankbait has been kind of like my go-to. Here I am recommending it to you guys, always throwing braid. For shallow waters this kvd 1.5 sexy shad crankbait by strike king <laughs> and little do i know if y'all are throwing it on fluorocarbon he's gonna dive way too low for the local stuff oh but this real oh my gosh next level dude yeah this is insane the casting distance i'm getting for the like the effort of the throw is a lot oh 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 wow drag is not tightened totally forgot about that Good thing I popped the reel every once in a while, I popped the bait. If a four pounder did come on, grab this thing, I'd be hard pressed to get him in with the drag set like that. 
I think I might have to switch to the chatterbait just because I'm diving too deep for this daggum place, I think. This thing normally doesn't dive that low on the braid, so there's pros and cons, y'all. The fluorocarbon really does what it says it does and sinks. Much better. Casting straight into the wind on four, no big deal. Yeah, so the metanium, the metanium on four, when it's really windy, with fluorocarbon specifically, feels more like how the scorpion would react on auto with braid. I just kind of had a little extra line come off the spool when I had it on auto a second ago, and I almost didn't feel as comfortable, like I could have gotten a backlash if I kept going. So that's one thing that's different. The 30 pound braid definitely acts different than the, than the fluorocarbon. I feel like when you're casting straight into the wind uh, with something lighter, you'd rather have the metanium on four than uh, auto if you're using fluorocarbon line. So, interesting. And what's funny is on four, it gets some decent distance. I'm halfway across the pond uh, on the maximum brake setting, so that's pretty cool. Caught one on the crankbait, but I'm gonna try something a little larger profile. I wanna catch a big boy. All right, we just cut this off the scorpion and I put the crankbait on the scorpion in case I decide I still wanna go back to it in a little bit. So that's right here. But uh, I tied this chatterbait onto the metanium since they already hit something that's shad. Christian threw a black and blue chatterbait for a second. Chartreuse and shad chatterbait that I got in the mystery tackle box as well as these four inch exo swim swim bait trailers um, that I also got in the next month's mystery tackle box. So we're gonna see if that won't reel us in a big one because that's a big presentation. But I'm thinking also I won't get caught in as much crap down low with that just one hook instead of the two treble hooks because on these chatter baits, that one hook stays up, so you can usually go pretty low and slow, which I think is gonna be more of what they want than cruising at a high speed with that uh, square bill. You know what, I'm gonna put this back on auto. I don't think I need the four for this heavy old bait. Woo, we out there, we out there. I feel I'm working way out there in the deep right now. This is gonna be good. Oh, dude, action on that is pristine. I think we just haven't found the population yet, man. Where are they hiding at? Speed it up a little bit. There he is. I sped it up a little faster. Literally that cast. Second one on the Metanium DC, pretty stoked. And he came on a bait I've never caught a fish on, which is a shad chatter bait. Actually, I have caught one in my uh, Lake Louisville video. But, uh, so second one on a shad chatter bait. First one with the Exo Swim 4 inch trailer. Uh, look at that sucker, he chomped that. So we're hoping for a bigger one, but what I did is I, uh, I was going low and slow and I said, you know what, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. I don't have as much confidence in the shad color yet, so I figure if I just kind of fly by him and they see that flash, they might want to grab it. Exactly what happened with little homie right here. So let's put him back and try and get us another one. Oh, wrong way, kid. Oh, look at all the little guys. Whoa, look at all the little guys that darted out of there. Say what? Still chilling under here. I felt him under my foot. He's like below us. There must be a hole right here. No way, the big bass are right here. <laughs> oh my God, that was whack. <laughs> So far, so good. Uh, we've caught two fish today, one on the crankbait, one on the chatterbait, but I'm gonna switch things up. I haven't got a bite in a little while, so I'm going with a natural color jig here, or we could call it actually like a bluegill pattern jig, and then a uh, bandito bug as the trailer. But uh, I think it's the right profile. We're gonna see what happens. I might need to trim the bandito bug down just a hair, but we'll throw it like this as is for a minute and see if we don't get a lunker over here. We got up the size. New reel, new line, new tactics. 
fresh battery in the GoPro. Good to go, boys. Let's go out deep. Make sure you rip apart these appendages so you can get the action you want. There we go, that looks much better. Oh, there he is. Got one. He could be okay. I think I got the bottom. I got the bottom. Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> that was a bite if I ever felt one. Christian's hooked up with what we believe is a big one. Are you serious? Yo! I got her hooked in the corner of the <laughs> First bass of 2019. First bass of 2019, man. Yeah. Alright, biggest one of the day goes to. But hopefully we'll catch a couple more. That's the third one we've got today in about two hours. So, uh, you know, it's not too bad. It's better than it has been lately. Weather's been like real cold, rainy, all that good stuff. So we're gonna try and get a couple more out here. We were kind of trying to figure them out. We thought they were going for the moving bait since I had got one on the crank and the chatter bait earlier. Then we uh, said, let's try bottom for a little while. We weren't getting hits too much. And so we threw jigs for a while, didn't get squat. Then he just switched up to a lipless crank and it's kind of a reddish color and he got that fish. So I'm thinking a darker color moving bait is gonna be the way to go and that's why I tied on. I'm going with the old faithful black and blue chatter bait. This one could produce some results pretty quickly. So let's see what happens. Oh dang. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll get out of here. How about access of water coming from somewhere else, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, we ain't tripping. We appreciate you. All right, no problem, man. Have a good one. Where have you been at the last two hours, bro? <laughs> 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 good, because I need that swim bait in the car anyways and a protein shake, so. <laughs> All right, we just got kicked out of here, so we're about to head to the next spot. Undetermined location at the moment, but we'll uh, catch up with y'all probably in the next two seconds. Little windy, we just got out of the second spot, fishing the small pond in front of the Emerson Apartments. I think we're right behind the like main event, LA Fitness or something like that. Real windy, we about to throw the black and blue chatterbait first and see what happens. Check it out though. All right guys, what's up? We're back. Finish out this video with the final first impressions. I didn't want to just leave you guys hanging after that fishing. What happened is Christian and I got kicked out. And then we went to the second spot and it was so windy. We did go after it for like another 15, 20 minutes with some chatter baits, but they just weren't biting. So we wrapped things up and I didn't want to leave y'all hanging with just that. I wanted to give you all my final thoughts for this first impression video of the Metanium DC. And what I have come to conclude after fishing with it just a little bit more today and uh, even maybe yesterday, it's been a couple days since <laughs> that first <laughs> that uh, first impression video was filmed, which is what you're watching. So uh, today I've gotten to throw it a little bit more. And what I found is that where I was kind of doubting it on the auto setting, like casting into the wind, and I had no doubts with the Scorpion, I think the fluorocarbon with the braid makes a little bit of a difference. But honestly, I was uh, fishing it in some really high winds today, casting it right into the wind. And all I found is that on this one, the metanium, it just seems like you might need to dial in the tension knob a little bit more to where your bait barely creeps, it barely drops, and that seems to do the trick. And I don't think it's a metanium versus scorpion thing, I think it's a fluorocarbon versus braid thing because just the, the difference in the line and how it comes off the spool I think makes a lot of difference. So with this fluorocarbon, as long as you've got that tension knob tightened up pretty good, what I've found is that on auto with the metanium, even into the wind or with the wind, you can get a little bit further distance. And, and you know, you should. This one's a little bit more expensive, right? Almost double the price. It's got all the bells and whistles. You should be getting something for the money spent. but. Um, 
let's just say I figured it out, I kind of got it dialed in, and uh, I love this thing, so <laughs> I was a little bit worried. I'm like, why is the Scorpion seemingly outperforming the Metanium a little bit, right? I was kind of like doubting this thing, but it's not the uh, it's not the Metanium. It's a fantastic reel. What I realized is it's the line, just tends to, uh, tighten up that tension knob, and you're literally good to go, because it has the same IDC5 system in it, that's why I'm comparing them, and I've had it longer, so more time to use it. What I found with the IDC5 system in the Scorpion, is that is that with the brakes on auto, it performs flawlessly no matter what the situation is. Even if the tension knob is pretty loose, and again, I think that's just because it has braid on there. So I'm real curious to maybe even put braid on here on the Metanium, just short term, just spool it up just to see what happens because you can tell the DC system works really good with that braided line. So I'm just throwing that out there, but I've now got it perfected and dialed in for the fluoro and no second guessing it, it's a sick reel. Then, you know, why did I even get it? You know, what's the big difference I feel like with these DC reels? It's not like, for me, it was never casting distance because, you know, some, somebody's always gonna have the furthest casting reel and I don't always need to go all the way across the pond. It feels like half the bites I get whenever I'm having my most fun is like right there by the bank. And, and this is not in all cases, but just throwing it out there, if you're buying a DC for casting distance, you might just not get the DC, you might just get the regular Metanium, the regular Corrado, Scorpion, whatever the reel is. But where I find this thing excels is a day like today or a day like you guys, you didn't really get to see that second half of the pond fishing that Christian and I did at the second spot where it's so windy and you're just gonna constantly be pulling out bird's nests all day long and and not to say you can't dial these other reels in you can get fantastic results where i feel like the dc's really excel is almost uh so you make a cast right <clears throat> and with the dc system constantly making adjust in, uh, adjustments but every one one thousandth of a second or whatever they advertise uh it's, it's like you're seeing it actually happen and it seems to be true you're casting it way out and of course your bait flies out but then on that descent where it doesn't matter if you're using a heavy bait or a light bait on that descent of the bait where it's about to go and hit the water, that's when you'd have to start and apply the thumb with most reels so that you wouldn't get that bird's nest or backlash because you cast it real heavy and the spool's still spinning really fast the whole time, but the bait is not being carried out as far. Now it's starting to just drop and yet the line still wants to come off that spool real quick. Well, the DC is gonna apply a little bit of break as it goes out, maximize the casting distance, then on that fall, it starts to pick up the braking and you literally cast and you don't have to put your thumb on the spool until it hits the water and if you have your tension knob dialed in you're not gonna have to touch it at all you can literally cast it and just let it hit the water and you won't even have to touch the spool it's an amazing system and it's what separates the DC's from so many others so I just wanted to throw that in there uh, the video is pretty lengthy but I hope you guys dig it got a little groovy song in here that I think went well for most of it and uh, we caught a couple good fish man so it's definitely an exciting first impression video be looking out for the full review where I'm gonna even go more in-depth on it very soon hope you guys subscribe to the channel and also drop a like it really helps the exposure helps get this channel out there and I appreciate you guys for it thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one peace